All right, so here's kind of the what I when we pitched the book, what I had, what I pitched with, and then this is kind of after I've worked with a lot of stuff, um, all my notes and things. And so what I did was just I made some sketches of all the different spreads that I think um, that I thought worked, and I would think of it as um, there would be the cover, then the end pages, title page. And then the first illustration, I kind of wanted it to move from this way. Second illustration would be on the bottom. Third illustration move, would move up this way. Fourth illustration had this S pattern. Then it would go down to the bottom and then move kind of up. So I wanted to move the eye with um, the compositions through each one of the pages. And then in the middle of the page where there's a storm that happens, then these two two are going to be kind of darker spreads and then it lightens up and then there's a sunset at the end and so this is I've kind of done everything else already um, and then I've got this one to go and then some of the smaller ones at the end and so the other thing that I always have on my desk when I'm working on this is just the manuscript and so I've got things you know this is once I've been already working on it for a long time I've got stuff that I've looked up and back matter and I've just condensed everything into one page so that way it's easy for me to reference and keep on my desk um, and then as I go through you know you can X things out and it just makes it easier it just makes you feel good because you feel like you've accomplished another thing and so this is so far I've just been doing digital sketches and after I've got all the spreads kind of sketched out in a you know better way than this one then I'm actually going to start carving them out as wood engravings. So that's kind of how I've started all these. So each one of these spreads has its own folder with the reference images that I do inside of it. So for the turtle one, I now downloaded a whole bunch of, you know, there's some doubles. I downloaded a whole bunch of turtle pictures. I downloaded a whole bunch of turtles on a log pictures. And then I need to make sure that however I sketch. And so here's my little thumbnail that I've kind of thought out. So the so the last one talks about, um, let me see, um, the water glitters, a brisk wind pushes storm clouds revealing the setting sun. Nine yellow mud turtles stretch out their necks, sunbathers soaking up the last rays before they leave their log. And so um, so with this one, what I wanted to do was, it's it's a, you know, several rows of text. I wanted to break up the text into two for two pages and then do kind of like a skinny setting sun on one side and then do the turtles on a log on the other side. So that was my idea for the composition for this one. So I needed pictures of mud turtles and I needed a picture of, um, I needed pictures of um, turtles on a log or I guess. And so those are the references and then I'll probably look at some sunset images just to get some color ideas next um, and then put everything into their own folders. Okay, so here's kind of the system that I'm using. So I have one folder on my desktop that has all my reference photos that I've downloaded. So in this one, I have um, I have a folder for each one of the spreads. And then each, inside of each spread, there's pictures that I then organize in more folders. And oh, and then there's just random, um, and then there's kind of general general images and then finished sketches in here. And then I also save everything that's finished, the final Photoshop um, sketches into my cloud just to make sure that in case my computer fries, I'll still have one copy somewhere else for him. And so here's the turtle, turtle folder. I've got all the main turtles kind of in the, you know, when I open the page. And I've just kind of downloaded here, you can see the turtle photos that you know, are closest to the ones where I'm thinking that this is the kind of picture that I need to see, you know, on a log. So I actually found one picture of the actual turtles on the log, but I kind of want to know what they look like in the front. I want to know what they look like in, when they're backward or from the back. I didn't really find any good pictures of what the turtles look like um, from their back. I think this is closest one. Um, so I'll have to kind of make that up based on the other one. And then I have, 
a folder with just turtles on logs. So this is just any kind of turtle, but I can use these for reference how turtles lay on logs. And, you know, maybe I'll pick kind of one, like one of these logs um, to use for reference for the actual illustration. Um, I need to have nine turtles on the log. So these are just some ideas on on how to do those. And then I, cause, because for the, in the little sketch, I also wanted to have um, a sunset in it. So I need to know kind of what the landscape and what the, it talks about after the storm and so on and so forth. So I looked up where, you know, researched where mud turtles occur in Colorado and then looked up pictures from, you know, that area. So then there's a bunch of pictures. It's kind of a prairie land um, type of a habitat. So then I'll probably use kind of, you know, something like this for the background where the sun is then peeking out um, in the back over here. And then I downloaded a whole bunch of sunsets. And so these images, you, I just find whatever images I can online just so I can reference colors, I can reference, you know, what the, you know, how, so like over, so you can see everything is kind of very warm tones, everything is kind of oranges, reds, um, and then further out it turns into some blues and stuff like that. And um, I'll look at, you know, how is the sun hitting, you know, where's dark areas. So in general, there's kind of a darker area where the sun is and then it gets brighter towards the front. Um, or like there's a, why is there? So like for this one, you know, you get the highlights, highlights over here and then, you know, a dark, this could, I could imagine a dark silhouette for a mountain and then the sun peeking out from behind over there. Um, and then like, I like this one cause it kind of looked like maybe storm clouds moving away or I was thinking, you know, this could look like kind of storm clouds moving away or you know, one of these ones. And then this is, I just like the clouds. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll use these for reference. Um, actually this one was for a different illustration. So I'm going to move it over there. Um, and so this is, yeah, yeah. So this is what I do when I'm researching. And so I'm not directly drawing from one image and just copying somebody else's work. I'm looking up a whole bunch of pictures, um, to try to have references to make the original sketch that I had thought about. And so that's kind of how this process in the beginning works. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Photoshop and I'm going to kind of start sketching over there. And so. So here you can kind of see how I start working out with this sketch. So I've got the original sketch that I did. And then what I do is I start filling it in. So I do a shade of light gray, um, which I just color in. Um, and so if you take the sketch out, that just basically silhouettes everything. Um, I, if there's any white areas that I want to be pure white, I would kind of mark those now. Then I do a middle gray, and then if you look, and I start erasing things in the middle gray. So if you take this away, you can see where I started to erase things. And then I do a dark layer. So basically what I do is I'll make a copy of this layer, and I'll name it the, the dark gray or middle gray or something, and then I start 
erasing through it. So then after I erase with it, it ends up looking like that. And then once I'm done with this layer, I drag it down and I um, copy the, the layer again. And then just, um, so after I copy the layer, I go to, I can go to saturation and I can make it, you know, lighter and darker depending what happens. And so that's how I get the three different colors of gray. So you can see I've started kind of working on the sun. I, it, I don't like it yet, so I'm going to have to probably redo that. Um, but that's basically how I start working. And then if I'm trying to do, so then if I want to start doing anything over here, then I would start erasing over there. Um, and at this point, I kind of started playing with colors. And so so I was thinking of doing a yellow and an orange and then kind of a burgundy dark red. I don't know if those will be the finer col final colors yet, but um, that's kind of what I'm thinking at least right now. So I'm just going to keep working on it and then um, work on my different layers and then see, add the sketch on the top, and then see what I get in the end.